Hello again and welcome to my channel. As promised or threatened in my last video, this is a little preamp board which I'm going to test and review. Is it worth modifying or is it just what it is? First of all, I must apologise for the condition of the board, but because I've been using this board on various tests for other projects, it is a bit of a mess. I've also got the potentiometer out on cables because they're a pig to solder into the board if you want to remove them. Regretfully, this board isn't available as a kit. So you get it complete. It came with a genuine 5532 and I'm also going to show you what it's like with an LME 49720, which I would suggest does give improved performance, certainly on paper. It gives you a better slew rate and a better high frequency. But we're, we're talking about small differences. So just make sure when you get the kit, do the test on the 5532 and make sure it's a genuine one. Anyway, let's have a close look at the board as it comes. And you can see there's a sort of line down the middle here and everything to this side is power supply. There's two individual amplifiers in the 5532, which I'm sure you know by now. So there's just one op amp per channel. Let's have a look at the power supply section first of all. Now, like most of these, it requires AC going into the input. And it, I'm using my usual 15 naught 15 transformer. And I'm sure people will ask, but it consumes 10 milliamps. That's all from the chip itself. So there's a little bit of wastage on the regulators here. Basically, what I'm saying is the smallest transformer you can get will do the job just fine. And having a bigger transformer will achieve absolutely nothing. There's nothing particularly special about the power supply other than it regulates to 15 naught 15, which is the absolutely ideal voltage for this circuit. Looking at this close up here, you'll wonder what this pot is. Well, it's a preset pot and it's basically to set the voltage of the regulators. And when I receive the board, you'll notice that there is a little bit of paint or nail varnish or something on there. And they have on this particular sample set the voltage to 15. And I'd, I've had no reason to adjust that. It's absolutely spot on. So they've done a good job there. You could ask why they don't just use a regulator that's already preset at 15 volts, because that's what many of these circuits do use. It's just an inherent thing that these variable, slightly less ripple and noise on the line. These are the main capacitors. So it comes in through the rectifier, which are just round here. And there's four discrete diodes. So you get the, it's probably about 20 volts comes out of the transformer, regulated down to 15 and additional smoothing after the regulator is here. You, you tend not to have large, large capacitors on the other side of the regulator because you don't need it because you're feeding in really smooth DC from here. And all you're doing basically here is bringing that down to the 15 volts. And of course, there's another regulator, the other side, which governs the other 15 volt rail. That's all I can say about that, really. It's almost textbook and it works perfectly. Now, the only negative thing about this particular board is I hope you can see this well because it's quite hard to focus on it. But this is one of the regulators and I don't know whether you can see there, but it's got screw marks on there. Can you see it? 
and that clearly means it's been screwed to another circuit board at some point so this is clearly not a new component there's no evidence of any of the other components being used but that one clearly is um, it it doesn't really matter i suppose because if the, you know, if the regulator either works or it doesn't but there was no mention in the advertisement that they're using secondhand components looking at the back of the board ignore these two capacitors here because they are the ones that i've been experimenting with and it's easier to tack them onto the back than it is going through the holes and then removing them but i've changed the value very slightly but to be honest the difference is the ones that are supplied are fine now this capacitor is important if you're going to use the um, supplied 5532 you don't need that but if you're going to use the LM you will need this it's a one nanofarad and it goes between pins 4 which is that one and pins 8 which is basically across the supply and you need that for stability of the higher speed chips like the LM ones and there's no place on the board to put it but it does say if you look at the manufacturer's data to place it right to the pins and it just basically gives the higher speed chip stability basically it stops it ringing so that is a must but ignore these these are these are me fiddlings and testings just as a footnote regarding the pots on here don't be tempted to crank it up to a little bit more voltage 15 volts is the sweet spot for for most of these kind of integrated circuits you could squeeze a little bit more out of it 16 but the absolute maximum voltage is about 17. why would you do that there's no real reason theoretically it will increase the headroom slightly but the headroom on this is way way more than you would need so play safe not worth the risk for no real benefit as you'd expect for these dc coupled amps which is in fact what this is the low frequency response is going to be right the way down to dc so rather than sweep it what you're looking at there now is one kilohertz our reference and the meter which you can't see at the moment is on 0 db it's not easy to show you them both at the same time so i'll, I'll leave it on the waveform for the moment and when there's something happens i'll take you down to the meter so we'll go down now and I'll call out the frequencies as we get there. But I'm expecting it to be flatter than flat. As I predicted, that's two hertz. We're on the dB scale down here. And as you can see, if for all it, well, it's just flat. Um, if it wasn't flat, there'd be something majorly wrong. And you can see the meter wobbling away there, counting at two hertz per second let's have a look at the high end well it would also come as no surprise to you but that is still 0 db at 50 kilohertz and if we go up i'll look at the meter and see when it starts to drop oh it's just silly <laughs> That is half a dB down at 400, very nearly 450 kilohertz. So I don't think there's an issue with the frequency response here. We're starting here with a 10 kilohertz square wave. There's no point in looking at a 1K or below. It's just, well, pretty well perfect, as you'd expect. Now I'm showing you this square wave just for giggles, really. 
and that's actually 90 kilohertz we could go mad and have there you are 100 kilohertz square wave not too shabby is it let's talk about input sensitivity for three volts rms out you need about 500 millivolts in that means that virtually anything that you're going to connect to this a telephone or whatever you will get in excess of three volts out if i turn the gain up a little bit more you can see the waveform is just beginning to clip and that is actually 10 volts as shown here it says 100 because i've got it calibrated for times 10 probe and we're not using a probe so you divide that figure by 10. so that's actually 10 volts as confirmed on the meter it's nice and symmetrical if i clip it some more it's very fractionally higher clipping at the top but it's known as hard clipping 10 volts maximum output so that will drive any amplifier what can i say about this little preamp board a reservation as i've mentioned already is the fact that at least one of the components is not new but saying that it works out of the box and if you don't mind that it doesn't cost a lot it gives a reasonable amount of gain it's not what you call a high gain preamp people sometimes say oh it's only got one little chip and they look at this little thing think oh well that's not going to be very good is it look at it look at the size of it but there's about 50 or 60 transistors in there don't think because it's just a little blob of plastic with um, eight legs on it that it's not going to be good i mean if you if you made that out of discrete components it would be on a board that sort of size so what does it sound like any preamp shouldn't have a sound at all I mean literally it's a piece of wire with gain that would be in the perfect world now it has a very neutral sound the the only time a preamp can make the amplifier sound different or better is if it if it has proper impedance matches because one or two people have commented that they've fed signal straight into a power amplifier and the NAP is one that comes up quite regularly and they say there's no top um, and that's because it doesn't like being fed with a relatively high impedance whereas a preamp like well like most preamps to be honest a preamp should offer a medium impedance um, input and a very low impedance output and this basically does that there's a bit of an interaction on the volume pot it's way outside of the audible pass range and i wouldn't let that worry you you can use it with a 5532 which is the test that i've been showing you here it does give faster slew rate using the lm range as what comes out but louder which is it sounds boring but that's what that's all it should do it shouldn't do anything else and certainly on the amplifiers that i've tested it on it certainly makes the the amplifier appear to sound better but of course that's purely because it's presenting it with the right impedances whether you need a preamp depends on what you're feeding it from if you're feeding it from a dac 90% of DACs, but it's particularly other than the very cheapest ones, will have a low impedance output and will drive it perfectly. But some of them don't have a gain control, and this will provide a gain control with relatively low interaction. Don't forget, by the way, if you're using the LM chips, you must put that little capacitor that I showed you on the back of the board across there otherwise it can ring and it can actually start to oscillate this is a problem by the way 
the higher the gain at high frequencies, the more possibility there is that it could go unstable. And you won't, unless you've got some test gear, you won't actually know it's oscillating, other than the fact it, it will sound a, a bit harsh and a bit wrong. That's the only way I can describe it. So the best thing is, if you're just going to use the 5532, the board out of the box is fine. But if you're going to use an LM, you must put that little capacitor, a hundred, uh, one nanofarad, I think it was from memory, across the supply pins. And don't put them anywhere else other than on the back of the board, right on the pins. The further it is away, the more inductance you're going to have and the less effective it's going to be. It's not just me saying this. It says that in the Texas Instruments data. So it's got to be right, hasn't it, if Texas Instruments says so.